Hello class and welcome to chapter 4. In this chapter we're going to talk about Porter's Five Forces. So let's get started. So Michael Porter is a renowned uh, business strategist and academic scholar. He's created a number of different academic analysis models that help, help uh, business people understand what's going on in their environment and to be able to process that into business strategies to ensure their company's success. One of his most famous models is Porter's Five Forces. In this model, we examine five forces that can impact an organization and thereby have an impact on what strategies the organization should use in order to ensure the organization's success. Those forces are threat of new entrants, rivalry among existing firms, threat of substitute products, bargaining power of buyers, and bargaining power of suppliers. We're going to take a close look at each of these. Here's a visual of what Porter's Five Forces looks like. You can see that he's arguing that potential entrants, power buyers, power suppliers, and threat of substitute products all has a all impacts how competitive the industry is, which is also impacted by the existing competitiveness that's innate within the industry itself, which can be influenced by whether the market is fragmented or consolidated, whether there's hyper competition or if it's standard competition. Threat of new entrants refers to the likelihood that a new competitor will come into the marketplace. So here we're talking about how easy it is for competitors to come in. So I got here contrast of two different industries, the airline industry versus the barbershop. The airline industry, there is significant barriers to entry. It is very difficult for a new competitor to come into the airline industry. One, because of the sheer expense of creating a new airline government regulations. It's very difficult. So in the airline industry, they don't spend much time developing strategies to combat the threat of new entrants. However, if you own a barbershop, the threat of new entrants is very real because the cost of enter for a new competitor in a barbershop is pretty low. All they have to do is rent, rent out a space and put in chairs. So when it comes to the ability for new competitors to come into the scene, some industries are much easier than others. And some, so you have to be constantly aware of that and keep that in the forefront of your mind as you build your strategies, whereas other industries, you simply don't have to worry about that. So barriers to entry, as I mentioned before, help to determine whether or not there's easy, whether it's easy or not for new competitors to come into your industry. Here are some examples. Economies of scale, product differentiation, government policies, cost advantages and disadvantages due to size, switching costs. All these come and play a role into how easy it is for a new competitor to come into the marketplace. Rivalry among existing firms. This refers to the current firms that are in the marketplace and how aggressively they are competing with each other. Some industries, the competition gets along pretty friendly. There's not very much direct competition and they're not fighting against each other. There's not um, price lowering and price gouging and direct marketing advertisements going against one competitor to another. Other industries are marred with that. For example, take the cell phone industry. There's a slew of commercials out where one company is specifically targeting another company. Verizon, for example, is specifically targeting Sprint and trying to take market share away from Sprint. They've even gone so far as to take an old Sprint, an old Verizon um, spokesperson, and sorry, an old Sprint spokesperson to use that in, the, in, in their advertising. So it's very competitive. And the more competitive the industry is, the more difficult it is for a company to be successful and the more strategic you have to be in your planning. Threat of substitute products. This refers to alternative products that can satisfy the same need or the same base need as your product. For example, soda and water. Soda is here clearly to quench a person's thirst to give them something to drink and satisfy a sugary goodness that many of us have come to enjoy. Well, water can satisfy that same need, the same base need. So water is considered a substitute product for soda. And when you're a company, you want to keep an eye on products that are substitute products. They're not direct competition, but they are indirect competition. For example, if you're a restaurant, well, the grocery store could be an indirect competitor of yours. They're not in your direct competitive line, but they provide substitute products. For example, someone can simply go home and cook a meal as opposed to going out to purchase a meal. Bargaining power of buyers. This refers to 
how much control or influence buyers have on your company. So buyers are those individuals who are purchasing your product. Now, if there's very few buyers and, and they represent the bulk of your sales, for example, the 80-20 rule is a perfect result, result of that, uh, where it says 20% of the effort, or in this case, customers, represent 80% of your sales. In that scenario, you, your buyers have pretty significant power because if you were to lose any one of them, it would result in a drastic reduction of sales in your organization. So it's good to have a variety, a variety or diversity of buyers so that you're not putting yourself at danger should one buyer to choose to leave. Bargaining power suppliers. Similar to bargaining power buyers, you would like to have a variety of suppliers to choose from because if one or two suppliers represented all of the all of the, the material you, you got coming in to make your product, then that could be a problem. What if those buyers decided to raise their prices? What if they decided to no longer sell to you? So that could be a major threat on your supply chain. So it's always good to have redundant buyers in mind. It's always good to do business with more than one supplier. That way you have that diversity and you can keep your suppliers honest and keep them in competing with each other as opposed to feeling as though they have the power to, to, to ratchet their prices up and you have no choice but to buy from them. That wraps it up for this lecture. If you have any questions, please email them or bring them to class if we're meeting physically for class. Thank you, and we'll see you later. And as always, don't forget to study.